As a web developer or designer, you might have seen an acronym getting thrown around in recent years. That acronym is WAAS or WAS. What does it mean exactly and how do you pronounce it again? We get to the bottom of that in this video, so stick around. So if you build websites for a living or you run a business or you're a freelancer where you build websites for clients, you might have heard the term WAS being thrown around recently. Uh, it started to gain popularity in recent years. Really quick, let's go back in time, back to 2017 in a blog post that I wrote for WP Elevation called Rise of the WAS, How to Scale Your Web Services Like a SaaS. And uh, this was when I decided uh, that I wanted to teach this concept, which is something I had been using in my own web business for a few years up to that point. And I've been having, I was having good success with it. So I wanted to uh, start teaching that business model. And I thought the term WAS was a great way to get that kind of the point across of, of what it is. The term WAS is just a great kind of succinct way to sum it up and it's kind of a catchy term and it really caught on. In fact, it's caught on in recent years so much that you'll see businesses now have created entire products and plugins around the WAS concept. You've got WAS Pro, WAS Hero, WP Ultimo, and my uh, company KeyPress and our course, Turnkey Websites Blueprint, are all created around the concept of WAS. Now this business model isn't entirely new. Uh, Squarespace, Wix, and WordPress.com have been doing WASs, you know, for the better part of a decade. We just haven't been calling it that because I wanted to hearken back to the business model of a SaaS. So back in the day how, you know, you used to have to go to the store and buy software in a box, take it home, install it. And then if you wanted a new version, you'd have to go back to the store and buy the new version. With the rise of SaaS, that's all gone out the window and now you know, it's super convenient. You just pay a monthly fee to access the software. Everything's stored in the cloud and it's, it's very awesome. And so I wanted to use the term WAS to give you the idea uh, of SaaS. Now, websites as a service is actually kind of an oxymoron because really when you build a website for a client, that is a service, right? So it's, it doesn't really work if you take it literally. It's more just for you to kind of think about the term SaaS and be reminded of SaaS and we're kind of copying the business model of SaaS to create a WAS. So what actually makes your business model fit a WAS? The first difference is that a WAS focuses on automation. Now automation uh, in the way that it's delivered uh, so that you as the website provider, as the service provider, don't need to be involved in the transaction or in the process of getting the website up and running. So the user um, will sign up for the service. They'll get a website provision for them uh, all automatically. You don't have to be involved in that process. Second thing uh, that makes a WAS unique is that it's focused on DIY for the customer. So the customer is the one that goes in and actually builds out the website. Very similarly to if they would, were to go install WordPress and then install a theme and build it out that way. The only difference is they don't need to secure hosting. They don't need to worry about security, optimization, updates. You're taking care of all of that because you're managing it all for them. And then they just go in and you're also, you know, I'm a big proponent of providing starter copy and pages and graphics. So you can get your folks up to a certain level. So they only have to go in and make a few tweaks before they can get an, a working website for their business. So, you know, they go in and, and swap out their logo, they add their own content, and then they take over management of the actual website. So it's all DIY. You as the provider are not going in and setting up anything for them in a WAS model. You can provide that as an upsell or as an add-on or as a, an additional service, but at the heart of a WAS model is automated for the customer and DIY for the customer so they go in and build everything themselves. The third thing that uh, makes a WAS unique is platform ownership. So the customer never truly owns their website. Just like if you sign up for Squarespace or Wix or WordPress.com, you don't own that website. If you want to leave, you can export your content, but you can't take the whole website and the tools and the infrastructure that's running it with you. Um, and that's the same thing for a WAS. And that's kind of the trade-off that you give the customer that they're paying you a low monthly fee to have access to this platform, but they don't own the platform. So if they leave, 
they can take their content with them, but they can't take the website itself. And that kind of dovetails into the fourth item that separates a WAS from traditional website delivery, and that is the price point. It's a relatively low price point. So we're talking, you know, the, the typical WAS should start at under $100 a month for the customer, and they pay that as a recurring monthly price to have access to the website platform that you built for them. So uh, we want to make it as low cost as possible. And that's really the selling point here is you're delivering a high quality website at a super low affordable cost so that people who would typically be priced out of the higher end, um, you know, hiring an agency to build a website, um, they'll be able to afford uh, your WAS offering. And the fifth thing that separates WAS from other business models for websites is scale. A WAS is meant to be scaled. It's meant to be something that you scale up, scale up, keep building, keep building, and you don't have to put a lot of effort into uh, uh, scaling your services. So in the traditional website model, the more websites you build um, and hopefully maintain and care for after you build them, the more staff you have to add, the more you know manpower and hours you're spending. With a WAS, because it's automated, because it's hands-off, it's uh, totally scalable for a small team to get hundreds, even thousands of customers onto your platform. So I spent a little uh, time talking about the five ways that a WAS is different from the traditional way of selling websites to clients. Uh, in the next video that I'm gonna record after this one, we're gonna talk about what a WAS is not. So there have been some misconceptions and some myths about what a WAS really is. And so I'm going to cover the, some of the business models and some of the, the ways to deliver a website that have, people have been calling a WAS, but it's not what a WAS was meant to uh, be about. So uh, if you want to check out that next video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel here. Uh, we're going to be releasing a lot more videos around the WAS concept, around productizing website services in general. Uh, and all of the other experience I have running my agency where I run a WAS and other productized services. So stick around. Uh, we'll have lots more videos coming your way and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.